When the camera's rolling, I like the danger in it. The heart pounds. It defies logic. It's thrilling to me. And wouldn't it be dope to have both these teams headed towards the playoffs? I think the city of New York needs this bad. What are your thoughts? Fuck the Knicks. Damn. Yeah, I love Thibodeau. I love some of the young players, but fuck those. (laughs) Another week gone, another week ahead. This is what's burning in the NBA. Jack, the NBA is facing the harsh reality of COVID-19. It's sweeping through the league. Just yesterday, the Celtics and Heat had to postpone their game due to not enough players eligible to play. Jason Tatum has caught it. Uh, So contact tracing all throughout his team and people he's played against. Uh, KD was victim of contact tracing. Uh, Michael Porter Jr., who's off to a hot start, similar situation. The NBA did everything they could last year with the bubble situation and keeping people safe. Now the reality of guys being back home and and still being on the honor system and and going to work is starting to cause a little bit of trouble. What do you think the NBA is thinking right now? That to stop this and have a healthy season is impossible. I mean, you got so many guys coming up with with, with tracing the COVID. You got so many so many guys in the organizations trying their best to to stay COVID free, to keep to keep away from all the symptoms just so they can play and have a successful season. You know, a lot of guys don't want to have to miss meaningful games because of COVID. A lot of guys don't want to have to uh, have, a, have a season where they're giving their all and a key game come where they can't have their key players because of COVID. So a, a lot of factors come into play when you're talking about this, but this is a situation that I don't think the NBA will be able to get under control, and I think they're starting to feel that way. Yeah, I just think it's something they're going to have to try to contain. You're not going to be able to control it. Um, Because it's not just the players, it's the staff, it's the weight coach, it's the trainers, it's the people who work in the front office. All these people are responsible for staying safe, but it could be something as simple as your chef coming over. You don't know who your chef has been around. It could be as simple as, you know, your housekeeper coming over. My housekeeper is here right now. You don't know who they've been around. So there's a lot of factors that play into, you know, the safety. Um, Although we feel like the players are doing what they're supposed to do, it's almost inevitable that this is going to happen. But I also think this is the, the NBA thinking ahead. You know, I think they realized this was coming. You know, we spoke on last week about the 7 to 10 play-in situation due to injury with Memphis. But this is also was in mind as well with COVID. You know, with key right. guys missing, missing, missing time and, and players having to miss and games having to be canceled. I think this is why the 7 to 10 play-in situation is going to be so vital. Because we are seeing that a lot of key guys throughout the season are going to miss time either to injury or COVID or both. Um, and the NBA didn't want that to eliminate their team from the playoffs. So we're going to have to see how this goes. Uh, obviously, they're going to do their best. But like you said, this this disease is, has taken over the world and it, the NBA is doing its best just to contain it. Who's hot? Who's not? Bradley Beal right now is the hottest player in the world. And the only thing to stop him was contact tracing. After dropping 60 <laughs> and 41, he had to sit out due to contact tracing, guarding Jason Tatum in a game. Uh, but Bradley Beal's on fire. And they thought that bringing Russell Westbrook was going to help them get over the hump. They're, the team is off to a slow start. Is there anything Washington can do to salvage Bradley Beal's prime? Because he showed himself as one of the best two-way players in the game. Yeah, it's just, you know, they, they don't have all the pieces to the puzzle they need. You know, they got a great coach. Russ is great. Bradley Beal is amazing. He's getting off to an amazing start. But it's, it's a lot of holes in that team. You know, they don't have an identity. Guys don't know their roles. Guys don't know their men. Like, it's just a lot going on over there. You have two talented players that they're expecting to do everything for this team. You know, I mean, Bradley Bill is carrying a, a, a lot of the load. But you need yep. defensive players. You need knockdown shooters. You need a lot to complement these guys. And I don't think they have that yet. Brad Beal's leading the league in scoring at 35 a game. Jack, if you're Bradley Beal, someone who's, you know, preached on staying loyal, he, he, his, his, his home is in D.C., would you look to stay or is it time to go? Because I kind of feel like he's wasting his best years uh, for a hopeless team. Well, I mean, you, 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 you can say it like that. You know, we look at it like that. I mean, I, I, I was in Charlotte, you know, a couple of years, and uh, <laughs> I was balling out. You know what I'm saying? We won the first year, but we, we wasn't winning the next couple of years, and I got moved. So I think it's different with him because, you know, he writes his own ticket. 
He can mm-hmm. either stay there, can continue, continue to give his all to an organization that's been loyal to him, or look for another situation where he could possibly win. But a lot of times when you move to those different situations, that, that possibly winning stuff that never comes around. You get there in a new environment, you don't get along with the coach, and things don't go as well as they was going on your old team. At least you were giving your all, you was with an organization that respected you, you respected them, and y'all came to a common ground. But don't just look, just don't think just because you're going to another spot that you're going to automatically win. It don't work like that. Yeah. The grass ain't always greener. Uh, Next up, who's hot, who's not? Luka Doncic has caught fire, averaging a triple-double over their last three games. Uh, He had a slow start, you know, I think with a lot of pressure. Uh, You know, odds on favor to win the MVP. A nice playoff run last year. Uh, Porzingis is set to make his debut tonight. How good can this team be with a healthy Luka and a healthy Porzingis? Sky's the limit, bro. Those two young stars, if KP can stay healthy... Uh, I, I think he'll be the Robin. I mean, he'll be the Robin to Batman, which which is uh, Luca. Luca's definitely looking forward to being the MVP this year. Everybody saying he could be. He had a great year last year, and everybody looked for him to pick up where he left off last year. But not having your full team and, and teams can just concentrate on you and put all the focus on you. It's hard. You're in the NBA. This is not overseas, so he gonna need right. his supporting cast. Yeah, definitely. I think everyone's asking, what are they missing? I'm someone who kind of feels like they still might be missing one piece. But then at the same time, we haven't seen these guys get a stretch of games healthy together with Luka and Mm -hmm. KP. Because obviously, the unicorn in in KP, a seven-footer that can do absolutely everything. And and Luka has shown us that he's on his way to being one of the greatest players ever. So it's going to be interesting to see if these guys can stay healthy and and, and put a string of games together to, to really show how good this team is. Last but not least on who's hot, who's not, Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson are on fire. Over their last four games, Zion is at 25, 8, and 57% from the field. Brandon Ingram's at 26, 7, and 6. But the team is only 1 and 3 over those last four games, Jack. What can they do to right this ship? Man, they got a great young team. Uh, I, I, I love the talent they have over there. You know, I just think they need a young star to step up and be the leader. You know, like you said, they, they have J.J. Riddick over there who's a great guy who everybody in the league respects. Somebody need to let some of what J.J. has as, as being a professional and, and being outspoken rub off on them, you know, and come and be a leader of this team. I think that's what they're missing. You know, they have a lot of talent. They just they just added um, uh, Bledsoe. I think they need to some kind of way have a leader that can be outspoken, bring this team together, talk to them when they're not doing, when they're not playing well. They just need somebody to stand up and be the, the be the be the leader of this team. And I don't think they have that right now. Yeah, I mean, obviously this is a good, talented young team with Stan Van Gundy at the helm. I think this is just young. This is just a young team that that is that's stumbling over some roadblocks. But I think mm-hmm. they'll be better for this at the end of the season. I think they're going to be able to right this ship. Uh, you know, to me, JJ is that leader, but he's not, to your point, someone who's out on the court all the time. You know, he's coming exactly. towards the end of his career. So I do agree that they need one of these younger guys to kind of step up in a leadership role uh, and figure that out. But I think this will serve them better in the long run because there's no one that's going to come save this team. This is a young, talented team, mm-hmm. and they're going to have to find their way. And I think this is just a part of that growing struggle. But they're still 10th right now, obviously early in the season, 10th in the West. But I see this team right in this ship and and definitely being in that mix to make the playoffs this year. Week ahead, uh, Trey Young has his hands full this week, Jack. He's got CP in Phoenix, and then he's got Dame in Portland. Um, What can he learn while still doing him uh, in these two matchups this week? Well, I know he loves to play against CP. I I just think I know he he enters these games more like – the stu- it's time for the student to become the teacher. You know, uh, mm. T- CP CP has been one of the best point guards for a long time and still one of the best point guards in the league. But, you know, Trey is up and coming. Trey's a lot faster. You know, he he, he can shoot mm-hmm. from a little deeper. You know, he, he he and he probably learned a lot from Chris Paul. But at the same time, Trey coming in the, in this game in these games to make his name known. And uh, I love to see battles like this being an a ex-basketball player. Absolutely. You know, Trey is someone who who respects everyone with fears no one. Um, although he'll right. learn, he's letting these motherfuckers know, like, I'm here too. It's, it's my time to shine. So, you know, obviously with CP, you get a great floor leader, someone who plays offense and defense and someone who hits big shots. So, I mean, obviously Trey will be able to soak that game up. But at the same time, CP's going to have his hands full because I know CP is someone who takes that challenge of guarding the best player. And if it's the point guard, he's going to guard him. So CP definitely has his hands full at 35 his little old ass out there going to be tracing Trey, so it's going to be a fun <laughs> matchup. 
And then his next game, Trace, next game is against Dame, someone who's one of the most dangerous scorers in the game, probably, if not the the most clutch player in the game. What do you think he can learn from Dame? Oh, man, Dame is just relentless. People don't know, you know, the reason why a lot of two guards have to guard Dame because Dame didn't put on some size. Dame didn't got strong yes. up top. Yep. You know, that's why he's shooting yep. the ball, shooting the ball from half court. It's it shooting like he's shooting a tic-tac. Uh, but, but like, <laughs> I mean, he, he, you know, he, he, I, I know Trey looks looks forward to games like this against Dame. You know, Dame going to come at him all game, and Trey gets to go back on him. You know, a lot of times when Trey play against these big point guards, he the ones doing the nutmeg and doing stuff to these big stars. Mm-hmm. So guys got to look out for Trey just as much as Trey got to look out for those guys. Yeah, no, Trey is definitely here. His team got off to a hot start. They've hit a little skid of late. Uh, I think they're maybe 11th in the East right now, but it's still early in the season. Uh, but it's going to be a fun week for Trey, and I'm interested to see how he handles himself. Continuing on in the week ahead, we got a nice matchup on Friday, the Pelicans versus the Lakers. Obviously, we all know the blockbuster trade that went down to get AD to L.A., Jack, as a player, how long does that chip on your shoulder last if you're an Ingram, Josh Hart, and Lonzo Ball? Uh, just after that first year. After, after the first time you go back and play against them, you know, in, in your old arena. I think after you play there, it's over. Whether you have a good or bad game, it's over. Your career goes on. You know, next the, the next season, you, you, you got all that out of your system. I think these guys just worrying about playing. They're not worrying about having big games against the Lakers. Obviously, every game is a must-win game. Guys want to win. But as far as, as having your stomach twisted and having those nerves or having a big game and a payback game, once you do that the first time, it's over with. Yeah. I mean, I, I agree um, also from a standpoint of we wouldn't see Brandon Ingram the most improved player if he had stayed with the Lakers. I think he's been able to Facts. spread his wings um, and show the the world how talented he is. I, I called it a while ago. I think he's the next coming of, of a Kevin Durant type player. Um, mm-hmm. Lonzo Ball, I feel Lonzo's still looking for his footing. You know, is, is this the right system for him? Is he going to live up to that number two pick uh, potential? And then Josh Hart is just a solid plug-in guy. And then we all know what you get with AD, you know, a transitional talent, someone who was a key member of that team winning a championship this year and is going to be a key force, obviously locking in for a five-year deal with the Lakers moving forward. So this is going to be a fun game. But like I said, anytime you get a chance to play the Lakers and then you were traded and and the trade went down kind of crazy, there's always going to be a little extra gas. But, you know, this is Mm -hmm. two years removed from that situation. I think now it's just another big game for them. Um, also ahead this week, Warriors versus the Suns, Steph Curry versus CP. This matchup has been great ever since Steph came in the league, obviously with CP on the back end of his career. Um, I think it would be great to be able to see this matchup in the playoffs one more time. Um, with the Clippers, we had some legendary battles with the Warriors, um, and CP and Steph went at each other. You know, uh, Steph dropped him a couple times. CP was able to drop him, uh, back and forth and, our Clipper team was kind of the last team to be able to have a handle on that Warrior team before they went on that 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 dynasty run they went on. So, what are your thoughts with uh you know an older CP still being able to do what he does and Steph as hot as he is right now? Yeah, Steph is hot. I don't think nobody really want to see Steph right now. He on fire. They, they they squeezing out wins, you know, and he and he's stepping up even when he getting double team, still getting thirty a night. I think the best triple the best team. Thing about CP- he yeah, been, he but, been triple. The, the Clippers tried to triple team his ass, and he was still getting off. Still dropping them off. But we know what uh-huh. CP doing. Big games. CP shows mm-hmm. up. You know, mm-hmm. and, and he and he got he got he got some some ammunition with him with Booker and, and, and the young fella down low. So I, mm-hmm. I, I I I I like CP chances. I just know big games like this. You know, he 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 don't come to play. He show up. One thing. I mean, obviously we're mentioning Steph and CP, but the the Warriors have been reborn with Draymond coming back mm-hmm. from injury, you know, and it's not even about his numbers. It's just he knows how to play basketball. He knows how to run that team. He knows the right position for defense. And I think it's such an overlooked aspect of his game. But since he's been back, and obviously Steph has caught fire, but I think that's partly to do with Draymond being back out there and, and, and Draymond doing what Draymond does. Rookie Radar, there's been some standout rookies this year. Um, Jack, uh, and we'll start off with LaMelo Ball, who just became the youngest rookie in history to drop a triple-double. He almost dropped one against his brother's team, missed it by nine, uh, by one assist, but he notched his first one versus the Hawks. Uh, he's right now at 12 points, six rebounds, nearly six assists. In 24 minutes of the game, coming off the bench uh, behind Rozier and Graham, he's going to be a breakout star to me. What are your thoughts on Lamelo? And he did it off the bench, coming off the bench. Off, he didn't even start. He didn't even start that game. 
You know, but we all knew that. We all knew that. You know, I I remember sometimes you talked about him and I started checking him out. You know what I mean? Because I I just didn't know what to expect from him from the other brothers. But he is the truth, bro. I'm talking Mm -hmm. about he is the truth. I mean, he he can really bring Charlotte uh, to 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 a winning organization. They put the right pieces around him, and I like I like I like the uh, tag team of of him and Rozier. They they look mm-hmm. good together, man. But this young kid is really getting off to a great start. He's not scared. And he's showing he can do everything that you need him to do on that court. I'm yep. excited to see him play. I love his energy and I love it looks just looks like he's having fun out there, you know. So he's he he's a problem. He was my pick for rookie of the year, so well, I'm gonna stand by that, but I'm excited about him. Um next up, Anthony Edwards. There was some doubts about him going number one. Uh, I think he's quieting those doubters. He's at 14 points a game, playing about 26 minutes a game, uh, playing behind Malik Beasley, but still someone who can get a bucket at any way you want it. And he's a dog. So what do you think about him and, and, and what he's been able to do on a team that's not very good, but he's still doing his thing? They 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 gonna give him to the they gonna give him the keys to that team in a minute, you know, along with Big Cat. I think uh this kid is is who I have for rookie of the year. I think he's gonna he's gonna only get better. He's making plays and he's making mistakes. As you see the last game he took a he he made a pass when he took a to, should have took a shot when he got right. a pass from Rubio at the end of the game and Rubio pulled him to the side. And you see he embraced it the right way. He was like, okay, now I'm learning. This kid is gonna be a mm-hmm. problem, man. Trust me, he, he's athletic. Yes. He he's not scared at all. He he's what he what we call a young dog. I think mm-hmm. I think this kid gonna be real good in this league, man. Yeah, I love him because, you know, reading up on it before, he was a football player at heart. And, you know, anytime a football player is able to transition into the NBA, you know they're going to be tough and be a dog. And he's got all the athletic and skill set to match that dog. And and those two is a lethal combination. Uh, Next up, James Wiseman, who started every game playing 20 minutes. He's at about 11 points, six rebounds, and almost two blocks a game. Uh, someone that Draymond Green raves about and someone that I knew would be able to plug in and do well in this system. You know, although they're still trying to find their identity for a big that could has a, a skill set as his, it, it's easy for him to fit in with this team and he's fit in seamlessly. What are your thoughts on Wiseman so far? Well, I mean, just from just from the jump, I'm not comparing him, but his body and the way he's playing the game that he, he's super talented, but his he hasn't grown into a, a full man yet. He's still a kid. I right. think when his body when his body start to form, he's gonna go through some of the same ups and downs AD went through. You know what I'm saying? He's just on a better team and he has better guys around him. So, but I think as far as body and him and him getting his his footing in the game, it's gonna take a year or two. But this kid belongs. He's gonna be an all star. He's gonna be one of the dominant big men in this game. Yeah, I see a little bit uh, of Chris Bosh in him. Um, obviously the lefty, mm. the inside out game, but I think he's bigger. And 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 more athletic than Bosch was, but Bosch, you know, remember young Bosch in Toronto was unguardable, no unstoppable. Problem. So I see, obviously, being able to learn from Draymond and being in the system with Steph is going to serve him right. But he's definitely going to be a star in this league. Um, one rookie that kind of was off to a slow start, but now is going to have every chance in the world is Cole Anthony. You know, unfortunately, with Markel uh, Fultz tearing his ACL. Um, everyone was happy that Markel was really starting to try to find his footing in this league, but he 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 tears his knee. But you know this league is a next man up opportunity. Now Cole Anthony is ready to step to the plate. Someone who's averaging nine points, uh, four rebounds, and three assists uh, so far in this young season. But I like this kid, young, athletic, um, and I'm interested to see how his game really translates uh, to the NBA and can he run an NBA team. Yeah, oh, oh, okay, graduate. This, 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 my young boy, man. Uh, he gonna be a problem, Matt. He works. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he he got the NBA D, DNA, you know, in his blood already from his pops. You know, so uh, this kid is an NBA player, man. You know, I, I hate folks have folks had to go down, but this what happens in the league when somebody mm-hmm. goes down. You have to be able to come and step up and take advantage of your opportunity. And I know this kid is gonna do that. Definitely. And he needs a dog, too. Super athletic, very skilled. So I'm excited to be able to see him spread his wings because, you know, Orlando's right in the thick of things up at the top of the Eastern Conference. The NFL playoffs, man, it was just an exciting week. Wild card weekend was everything it cracked up to be. A few upsets, but we're on to next week's matchups. Um, some exciting matchups. First off, the Rams, who upset Seattle, go into Green Bay. Who you got there? I got Green Bay. It's gonna be cold. Aaron Rodgers. I think this Aaron Rodgers year to get out of the Super Bowl. They they're not. They don't have the best Green Bay team he's ever had, but they're playing hard and they're all on the same page. I think Aaron Rodgers is focused. I don't think the Rams have a shot. I think they blew their wide this week against Seattle. <laughs> uh, Aaron Rodgers is on an MVP type season, and as much as I would love to see LA pull off the trifecta with championships, with obviously the Lakers, Dodgers, and Rams. 
Um, I don't know if the Rams got it this this year. I agree with you. Um, I think it was a big upset to beat Seattle. But Green Bay is on a mission right now. So uh, I'm definitely picking Green Bay as well. Uh, next up, Tom Brady goes into New Orleans to face, possibly for the last time, Drew Brees. Who you got? I will never go against Tom Brady. Definitely not in the playoffs. I don't care if he's playing with the bad news bears. If Tom Brady on that team, <laughs> I'm going with Tom Brady. I love Drew. I love Drew. And, you know, I, I like New Orleans. I'm a Who That fan. But I can't not go against Tom Brady. Yeah. Man, Tom Brady's been crazy. I'm 43 years old, throwing 40 touchdowns, uh, getting this team on track. And, you know, coming towards the playoffs, he's the most dangerous man in the world. So I'm going to have to agree with you. I got Tom Brady over the Saints this weekend. Next up. Cleveland travels to Kansas City. Cleveland got their first playoff win since 1995. You got to show Baker Mayfield some respect. There's mm -hmm. been a lot of shit talking about him, but he's able to get his team over the hump finally off to the second round of the playoffs. But they're facing a tough Kansas City Chiefs team. Who you got, Jack? Man, the Browns, what a season they had. Odell went down. They get another big win, blow out Pittsburgh. But this is where it stops. Okay, you had a great <laughs> year, man. Ain't no way in hell y'all beating the Chiefs. I'm sorry. I know y'all going to show up and play hard, but there's too many weapons over there, too much experience, great coaching, everything over there. Uh, Chiefs, Chiefs going to win this game again. Definitely. I completely agree with you on all aspects, but I definitely want to show the Browns some love, man, and not that, you know, anything can happen in the game, but I want to because there's someone, Baker Mayfield's taking a lot of heat. Odell took mm -hmm. a lot of heat before he went down. Jarvis Landy has stepped up and shown that he's an, uh, you know, a 1A receiver. Uh, Chubbs, the running game, tough team, but I think they're obviously running into the best team in the NFL right now, so I got Kansas City as well. Uh, last but not least, Baltimore goes to Buffalo. Buffalo nearly escaped mm. uh, a victory against the Colts. Uh, Josh Allen has had a great season, but Lamar Jackson is that man. Uh, threw for a hundred, threw for over a hundred, ran for over a hundred. The team is hot at the right time. Who do you got in this game? Well, you know they struggled. The Bills struggled against a okay coach defense. That Ravens mm -hmm. defense, they all mm. they got a whole bunch of that animals front on seven. that defense. That front, that front seven, seven. They, went with the, they held big boy. They they held uh, Henry to I think under sixty yards, and that that's mm. saying a lot to, for the best running back in the game. That's impressive. And the DB's been showing up. The DB's made the mm -hmm. game winning play. So, and with the offense, you know, L L Lamar, Lamar Jackson has something to prove. You know, he had, mm -hmm. he had a letdown last year with winning MVP. This year, he's coming for a championship and they're playing like it. You know, I, I think these guys, I think these guys win this game at least by 21. Ooh, that's a big blow. I mean, Stephon mm -hmm. Diggs and Josh Allen are having a hell of a season. That's a, that's one of the best combos in the game. But I agree that front seven of Baltimore and then the way that uh, Lamar Jackson is hot right now. You know, you it, it's hard to game plan for someone like him, you know, throw back to a Mike Vick type player where he can beat yeah. you with his with his arm or his legs. So he's playing well. He's not turning the ball over. And that's what you need to do in the playoffs. Winding down the show. Here goes our What's Burning Quick Hitters. want to welcome back Carl Anthony Towns. Man, this guy, Jack, we both know he's, he's been going through a lot, lost his mom last season. Um, I had a chance to actually sit down and talk with him in Miami when we were both out there for the Biden campaign, talked to him and his, his dad, and just heard how everything went down. You know, it, it, Luckily, his dad survived. His dad was in the hospital with his mom while his mom was dying. But on top of that, lost, I think, six other family members, maybe seven, if I'm not mistaken. But for this guy to be able to you know, put all this aside and come out here and, and hoop really shows what kind of warrior he is. And I just want to send my love out to him and his family uh, through this tough time. Yeah, I, I, I definitely want to send my love out to him and his family. I think uh, he, de he deserves to take as much time as he wanted. You know, even when even when everything happened with my brother George Floyd, it's a lot of NBA players that I know, Matt. It's a lot of NBA players. Everything Cat been through, he came to the press conference and stood right behind me, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm forever mm -hmm. I'm forever indebted to him, and uh, you know I, I just pray for him and his family, and, and pray for continued strength for him because he's a great kid, man. Absolutely, come back with a splash, 25 and 13 last game. So uh, hats off to our brother Cat. Uh, we're here with you, bro. We're sending love and prayers out to you and your family. Um, next up, Jeremy Grant. This fucking dude is on fire. Turned down a three-year, $60 million deal with Denver to take the same deal in Detroit because I think he wanted an expanded role, and he's definitely taking advantage of that. This guy's averaging nearly 25 points a game. Although the team is struggling, this guy is doing his thing, man, and I'm happy for him. 
Yeah, I'm happy for him too. I think I think OKC didn't use him how they should have used him when he was there. This kid, this mm-hmm. kid is an athlete, man. And I'm I'm glad he's getting his just due. I'm glad he made a, a better decision with going to Detroit so he can actually play and and get the best of his game and 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 just go out there and and know and do what he know he can do. You know, a lot of times you come off the bench, your role is limited. You can't really give your full potential. So I'm glad he's getting his money. I'm glad he's going out there and making a difference in Detroit. Yeah, he's definitely spreading his ring, showing the world what he's about. But he's some guy that play. He plays both sides of the ball too, you know. So this guy can sneak around and end up being an All Star this season. By the way, he's playing. Like I said, although his team is struggling, Blake Griffin's been in and out. Um, I love the way he's been playing. Uh, next up, Harden. We're still on Harden watch. It seems like the Rumbles have settled down. He's leading the league in assists at 11.3 a game. Uh, the team is a little up and down, but starting to find some consistency. They fucked Boogie last night. Did you see the shit with Boogie last night? Where, uh, yeah, they, the, yeah, they, <laughs> yeah, they fucked him. They fucked him. Hey, Boogie did everything he did to c- c- control himself with the Morris situation, walked away knowing deep down that Morris didn't want no smoke with him, so he walked away, and then LeBron sells the shit out of a foul and ends up getting Boogie kicked out, but I feel bad. But back to Harden, um, playing well, teams, like I said, finding their footing, but it doesn't. It kind of just seems like he's locked in right now, and, and I think as as the Rockets, that's what they want to see. Well, I mean, the, good, the the best thing I like about it, is, you know, he's being professional. He's going mm-hmm. out there, he's playing, he's playing the game, he's he's being the leader of his team, and continuing to be one of the best players in this league, regardless of what's going on upstairs in the offices with contract wise, and, and going to play with a different team. So I love the fact that he's making the best of the situation. I love the fact he's going out there and lead, and I and I think he's starting to feel that he can go somewhere with this team. You know, I just I just hope guys continue to stay healthy and continue to do the right things. Absolutely. Um, Battle of New York. This is going to end up being an interesting situation, man. Tom Thibodeau has these these Knicks playing hard. I know it's early. Julius Randle's playing his ass off. He's got everyone else playing. The Nets are still trying to find their footing. Obviously, uh, KD just returned last night. You might need to call Kyrie and see uh, when he feels like playing. But <laughs> wouldn't it, hey, hey, wouldn't it, hey, wouldn't it be dope to have both these teams? headed towards the playoffs. I think the city of New York needs this bad. What are your thoughts? Man, fuck no. I ain't finna gas no. I ain't finna gas nothing no, with, with the Knicks. Fuck the Knicks. I'm gonna continue to say that. I'm not riding with yeah. them to that owner gone. I, nah, damn that. I'm going with Brooklyn. The Knicks ain't getting no love from me. Yeah. And then you know I don't like Austin Rivers either. So uh, uh, <laughs> I, I, I I like the young kid from Duke. I like him. But my fuck the Knicks, man. Dolan gone. Then I start speaking good about the Knicks. But until then, it's all about Brooklyn to me, man. Fuck the Knicks. Damn. The Knicks yeah, wants that's to do something feel. to you. No, but I, I, don't like Dol- I, I don't like Dolan. I do not like I Dolan, bro. Nah, Dolan ain't shit, just like Sarver ain't shit. But <laughs> I, 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 I root for players. And like I said, I like Thibodeau's an acquired taste. And I, I, I guess that the, the, they're acquiring his taste. And I'm really happy for Julius Randle. S- similar to Ingram, he was able to get away from the Lakers. Not that the Lakers were a bad situation, but he was able to get away from these, these teams and really show how talented he is. And this guy is absolutely killing. So we'll have to see how how it goes, how hot they can stay, if they can stay consistent. But, uh, you know, don't look for Brooklyn to be down in the cellar of the Eastern Conference for long. Once KD and, and Kyrie get back on track, they'll start pushing their team back to the top of the Eastern Conference. Yeah, I love Thibodeau. I love some of the young players, but fuck Dolan. <laughs> um, but Jack, on a, on a serious note about Kyrie, um, I've heard mixed reasons. I've, you know, there was a report that he said he didn't want to play, but then I also heard that everything that went on this past week um, at the Capitol in DC has also affected his decision. Have you heard anything of late of 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 his status or or why he's out? <clears throat> I just just me knowing Kyrie. You know, he didn't go to the bubble for a reason because he wanted mm-hmm. to keep attention. You know, on on, on what's more, what's more important in basketball. And that's equality. That's us stop getting killed. And that's still on his mind. Yeah, they're in the bubble. Yeah, it's a new season. But these things are still going on. And he want to keep that. His mind is still on that. Like Kyrie mm-hmm. cares about, he, he has a big heart. And he understands mm-hmm. that once he leaves that basketball game, he's dealing with real life. It's real life issues that go on. And these things still affect him. So at times, you know, basketball is not that important to him when people are still out here getting killed. So I mm-hmm. understand it. And you know what I'm saying? I, I know his communication with, 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 with uh, Katie has been good. You know, I, I just just hope people on the outside looking in don't just judge him because there's a lot of time a lot of people need to understand that it's a lot of things in life that's going on outside of sports that mean way more than a game 
To me, I think what's most important, and you hit it on the head, is he's able to communicate with obviously KD and his team, and they have his back. So it doesn't really matter what no one else fucking thinks. Like those guys in your locker room have your back. That's the most important thing. That's right. what I respect and that what I appreciate. So you know, whenever he feels like the, 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 you know his mind is right to come back, obviously they'll be ready for him. But I think that brings up a bigger point. You know, this past Wednesday. We saw the Capitals stormed and taken over. And, uh, you know, I've spoken a lot about it a lot on my IG. Um, as ugly as it was, I still think, Jack, it was something that needed to happen. Um, yeah. after, they killed, after they killed your brother this summer, <clears throat> there was still a lot of bullshit excuses of, you know, why it happened or excuses mm-hmm. for it happening. And still the cops really haven't been charged yet. So there's still a lot of bullshit in, up, up in the air with that. Um, this happening this past Wednesday really shows – as African Americans, what we've been talking about, the double standard, you know, everyone, and I love that even <clears throat> other races have said, if that was blacks, it would have been a bloodbath. Oh, and we all God. know that. And, and the fact that we saw police officers opening gates, allowing these people to ransack the Capitol, showing these fucking terrorists where certain Congress members' bill, uh, rooms are, it was absolutely sickening. But like I said, I think it still needed to happen because there's not enough people that understand that there is a double standard in this country based yeah. on the color of your skin. And that was set on display on Wednesday. Yeah, man, it, 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 it was sad to see. Um, like you said, man, I, I said the same thing. If it was me and you even 100 feet from that from that building, we would have we been shot at dead, man. And, and it, it just sucks. But once again, I'm not surprised, Matt. The country was built off that type of hate. This country was built Absolutely. off... Uh, that type, that 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 type of that type of hate, and that and that type of belief of of you have to do those type of things to get your point across. So, uh, like you said, it had to happen. But uh, I'm glad it wasn't our fight. I'm, I'm glad we stood to the side and watched the KKK fight the other racist people because that's all that was. Mm-hmm. So I think hopefully this has uh, awoken enough people to realize first and foremost, President Trump is just a horrible person who is one of those motherfucking clowns that when he loses the game he want to take his ball home. So he's got a bunch of people <laughs> he, he's got a bunch of pe- he's got a bunch of people out here mad that he literally lost the election. <clears throat> and I <clears throat> excuse me, and I'll say one thing he did throughout this four years and I'll even say his presidency was needed for the fact that he's brought everyone together. You know, we, you've always you've always preached it, you know, love love those who love, you know, that's been, oh, I don't want to steal your line, but that's been your line. But to me now, it's not necessarily about color division. It's about right, right and wrong, right and wrong and love and hate at the end of the day. And, and I think he has brought black people together, brown people together, and then all of our other allies. We all understand what kind of monster he was and what he tried to turn this country into. And although there's still 75 million people that believe in Trump, there's more of us that don't believe in him and believe in the right way. And and we're not the minority anymore. They've tried to label us the minority to keep us in our place, but we're the majority. We have the power now and we got to hold on to that. So like I said, hopefully through this unfortunate situation this past Wednesday at the Capitol, we'll start heading in the right direction. So peace and love to everyone out there, man. Uh, condolences to those who lost their lives uh, during this situation. And I hope every motherfucker that went to that situation and showed their ass ends up paying for it, whether that's jail, losing your job, maybe you get your ass beat in the future. You got some shit coming for you. Yeah, <clears throat> calm is real. Hot off the press right now, there's been a postponement tonight between the Pelicans and Mavericks due to COVID-19 regulations. And then also tomorrow night, it'll be the Celtics versus the Bulls will also be postponed. Um Important to note that the NBA has a conference call today to, to discuss further scheduling and, and, and kind of understanding how they can try to get um, contain uh, this COVID outbreak, um, which is unfortunate, but I know they'll do what's right. Uh, Jack, before we get out of here, national championship game tonight, Alabama, Ohio State, who you got? I got 25 cush-ups on Bama. Bet. I got Ohio State. I wanted Clemson to make it, but Ohio State came and whooped that ass. So I'm going to roll with Ohio <laughs> State. And we got 25 cush ups on the line. Well, that's a wrap. Hope you enjoyed this week of What's Burning. Big shout out to Showtime Basketball YouTube and the iHeart Black Effects Network. And make sure y'all lock in with us on Twitter at Show Basketball. Peace.